Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson. I'm the CEO of Miami's Action Coach Business Coaching Firm, Team Sage, and your host of the Business Spotlight, where we focus on the businesses that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Adij Sterling. And Najij, if I pronounce your name incorrectly or anybody else on the team or the company incorrectly, please correct me because I'm committed to getting that. No worries. Thank you. So welcome, Nadish. Please give us a brief description of La Pe uh, Bakery and you know, some of the history of it so that we have a good understanding of what it is that uh, you and your family-owned business are up to. Fantastic. Uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Jody Ann, for this opportunity. Uh, so my name is Nadeej Sterlin. I'm co-owner and VP of sales and marketing at La Pa Bakery. It's a family business that started in 2005 um, within our family. So my mom, my stepfather, and myself were the original uh, founders of the business back in 2005. Um, this is more of a hybrid retail slash manufacturing bakery, um, Caribbean themed. Uh, yeah. We make hard dough breads, we make different pastries and sweets. And when I say hybrid, we allow customers to walk in and purchase product. And we also deliver product to um, local groceries. So we're both in B2B, B2B yeah. and, and B2C. Um, and we also supply about three customers out in the Bahamas. Uh, they come to, to purchase our product and then they go go to the port and then ship it out to the Bahamas. Patty? <laughs> More so on the breads, our, our hard dough bread. breads, uh, which are known in the Caribbean um, kind of arena. It's beautiful. We are, have quite a significant Haitian community here in South Florida. And so when did your family come to this area? You know, great question. And you're definitely right about the footprint of, of Haitians and Haitians and Haitian Americans within South Florida. Um, so my uh, stepfather, Lucien Nozil, and, and my mom, Yolande de Rosier, they actually met at a bakery in the 80s, uh, a, a Haitian bakery. Uh, so Lucien came over in the 80s with experience from Haiti on making breads and pastries um, in Haiti. And he partnered up with um, one of the owners uh, that opened up a bakery back in the 80s. I think it was one of the first Haitian bakeries um, in South Florida. And they opened up a bakery. Um, he met my mom. <laughs> and so they, they, they've been passionate about this area before, but they've also been passionate, both of them, about giving back to the Haitian community. And so we're very thoughtful and they are, they were very thoughtful on making sure that they stay to the traditional taste mm -hmm. of the hard dough bread recipe and then the type of paste, the savory pastries that, that we sell and we make. Pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I grew up here in Miami. So one of the things that people will often say is, boy, the city has changed a lot since you were a little girl. I don't know, like, yeah, for the better. Mm -hmm. We have one of the most welcoming communities in South Florida for all different kinds of, of people from different nationalities and backgrounds. And you know, people are they're welcome here. And it created such a flavor, such a mag uh, flavor for the bakery, but such a magnificent mix of flavors of people in South Florida that makes us somewhat world renowned. I definitely agree. We're we're a cultural melting pot, right? Similar to how New York is very diverse. Um, uh, I I appreciate that. We appreciate that, and and it's always interesting finding different restaurants from mm -hmm. you know from different backgrounds, whether it's a Cuban cafe or a Me Mexican restaurant or whatever it is. Um, just tasting different flavors here, and so we're we're fortunate to be in an area where. Um, we don't even have to travel out, right? To have an international experience. <laughs> Correct. Oh, that's great. So tell me what, what had you go into the business? You know, Simon Sinek says, 
People don't care what you do or how you do what you do. Of course, they do on some level, but they care a lot about why you do what you do. So what had you join? So that's a great question. It's been an interesting weave. Um, so I, I helped co-found the business in 2005, but I actually was more of an investor um, when I went into the business because it was really to support uh, my stepfather and my mom and their passion in this space. Um, one, they enjoy baking. They enjoy delighting the consumer, especially with having the consumer feel some nostalgia with mm -hmm. eating product from Haiti or from the Caribbean islands that reminds them of when they were young. They, they enjoy that. And two, they also enjoy giving back to the community. And as business owners, uh, they used to, and they still, my mom still does, keep, keep up with this tradition with donating, um, with helping with the newer residents who come in who need a job, with showing them the craft. Uh, they, they also mentored several bakeries, uh, owners in South Florida. So I will say there's probably about seven to eight bakeries in Florida that owe my stepdad and my mom some gratitude for their mentorship in terms of this space. And so for me, as, as the firstborn on, on my mom's side, I'm passionate about what they grew together and I'm passionate about the quality of their foods and how it helps the community. And so I definitely wanted to invest in that and wanted to make sure that, you know, that continued to grow. Um, in terms of my career path, I actually went to cor corporate America, to be honest oh. with you. Mm -hmm. And so I've had uh, about 13 years on the corporate side, <clears throat> mainly with PepsiCo and Frito-Lay. Okay. So still in food and beverage, but on in, on a different level. So I've, I've had experience with marketing, with strategy, with, uh, with leading sales, frontline execution. I've had experience nice. on the sales side. So as you can tell, I've probably used this. <laughs> yeah. Coming, coming back. Um, actually, I left corporate America in 2020 around the okay. pandemic because yeah. I wanted to pivot my career, but then also focus more as an owner operator at the bakery. And so 2020 and from now, I've been really on the grounds with, uh, with my mom and now my little sister, who's- I saw the, that she's part of the business. Well. Yeah. yeah, so it's now the three of us, three women <laughs> <laughs> um, who are passionate about the business um, and we're looking on expanding it with not only a second location, but with additional offerings. And we're also looking at national distribution from a shipment perspective. Um, and also, you know, doing some unique things like um, having more of a cafe style. So where it's more of an, a sit-in and, and also offering some hot meals. So we're looking at transforming the business a bit as we scale it. Um, but my passion, again, lied with my realizing my step father's and my mom's dream, helping to push that forward. And now I'm having more of a first class seat on helping to manage and grow the business operationally. Well, I'm confident that your expertise in marketing and strategy and that will be you know, a huge contribution to where you all are headed. How many people are on your team? So in terms of staff, we're a staff of about 12 right now. Um, we've gone as high as 18, especially during peak seasons. Our peak season is definitely the end of the year with the holidays. So November, December, January. Um, yeah, but it's about 12 right now. Yeah. Okay, good. So who is the ideal client for you in terms of like somebody who's just walking in um, because they wouldn't necessarily like I could go I and mean, I would love it. Right. And, and then also your your um, more B to B business. Who's yeah, a, ideal, who's ideal for you on the B to B side? Great question. So from a B to B side, we're more so in the small grocery chain to supermarket level. So we have customers such as Presidente. Uh, key foods, food fair, um, and the like. And so we haven't approached uh, bigger chains uh, such as 
Publix or Walmart at that level because we're a little bit out of capacity. So we, we want to make sure we, you know, we properly crawl before we run and then walk. Um, and so those would be the sweet spot at the moment. Um, and we yeah. only um, deliver to select stores. So it's not the entire chain at the moment. Um, but we are looking to definitely expand into supermarket and then mass merch where it makes sense. So mass merch would be more so the Walmart, maybe more of a targeted strategy where, where our key consumers live and reside, maybe not the full chain. Yeah. And then from consumers or customers who walk in, these are bread and pastry lovers. Uh, yeah. and, and so it, it runs the gamut. I mean, we, we not only have um, Haitians or Haitian Americans coming, walking through our doors. We have Hispanic customers walking through our doors who are familiar with the this type of hard, hard dough bread, denser, uh, buttery bread, uh, maybe a little bit more unhealthy for you, but it tastes so good. <laughs> Um, and then we also have, uh, you know, Jamaicans, Bahamians. So truly, you know, our core consumer is that con that Caribbean consumer, um, but the hard dough bread is in different, uh, it's in different, um, it's part of different islands, different countries. And so I, I, I think that flavor profile is, is actually pretty well known. Um, and here in South Florida, you can find several Haitian bakeries and and so the footprint um, of you know people interacting with that type of product I'm sure have grown over time as well. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, so tell me, um, other than you coming into the business at, uh, at during the pandemic, was there any other kinds of impacts to the business? Did it grow? Did it shrink? How did that impact your business? The uh, the pandemic? A great question. So, uh, so we actually, <clears throat> our business actually shrank slightly right before the pandemic. Um, and so when I came in, there were some things uh, that I wanted to implement. And with the alignment with my sister and, and my mother, we were able to implement those changes in 2020, uh, around the fall of 2020. Um, so part of that was rebranding. Um, we did a whole kind of rebranding strategy. We had great products, but I think the the awareness, the A and M, the awareness of the marketing, wasn't really there or fleshed out, and so that was a big um, focus area for me and, and for our business. Um, we did do a slight renovation uh, to help improve the customer or the consumer experience walking into the location. As you can imagine, with the pandemic, and you know this, with the pandemic, there were businesses that shut down, right? Yeah. There were um, customers or consumers who were too afraid to go out. And so if they did go out to a location, whatever that is, whether it's the supermarket, the gas station, a bakery, they want to make sure that they were walking into a, a space that they were safe yeah. and felt protected to even take on a service or do a transaction. And so that that's partly tied to why we did the renovation um, at that time, um, just because we wanted to make sure a consumer felt that they were in a safe mm -hmm. space, that it was clean, that it was inviting, um, that it was well represented. And so we received a lot of feedback um, from our post to our pre on, wow, you know, this, this place is fantastic. And again, it goes back to reminding them of, you know, when they were younger or the products that they used to taste, you know, when their families were around, et cetera. And so, again, we wanted to really highlight that, that atmosphere. Um, something else that we implemented, and then I'll get to the results. We, people, a lot of people weren't going out. And so we weren't offering any deliveries at that time, but in 2020, we started testing out the third-party deliveries like DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. And then we were an all-cash business as well. And so we started taking credit cards. Um, and so, and, and I say that because it may seem like a minor change, but I feel like, and this is, I, this is without any having any insights in front of me, but I feel like a lot of small businesses, because of the fees 
and trying to figure out these merchant fees and how it works within their P&L, they get dissuaded um, by taking on credit card companies and offering that additional uh, payment option. Um, but sometimes you have to make that small investment to make it more convenient for the consumer. And so I definitely had to have a discussion with my mom on, here's the positive side. I, I understand the fees, but here's the positive side to, to having this additional option. And so it was definitely a journey. Um, it wasn't a full one week, let's make all these changes, but really trying to show them a, a roadmap on things that we can look into that was low hanging fruit, but appropriate for the time yeah. just to make it work for both sides. And so um, I just wanted to pull up some of some of the results. So this was in 2020. So in 2020, we ended the year um, plus 67% to prior year. And nice. sales revenue. that was okay. in 2020. 2021, we ended the year at 111% to prior year. And last year in 2022, we ended the year at 63% uh, to prior year. And this is all straight sales revenue. Mm -hmm. So we've been seeing strong growth. Um, we've definitely maintained the, the marketing at a certain level, but we've also done some sponsorships and worked with the community at, at different levels. We're looking at growing, slowly growing different categories, but we are a little out of capacity at the current location that we're in, in Miramar. Right. Yeah. It's it's about it's about like a sixteen hundred square feet location. We are our second location will be about thirty two hundred square feet. That's a big jump. Good for you. That's a big jump, but it it would support the business a lot more. And so uh, we're excited for that for that change because we want to make sure we're able to always meet the demands of the consumer, and we have an opportunity with doing that at times. So the 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 uh, thought that comes to my mind is like that that growth. Do you are you the one who manages the numbers in the business? I or, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm one of the main people that's managing that. I work very closely okay. with with our CPA on okay. uh, on that. Um, we have we did do one price increase. I will say that we did do one price increase last year. Um, and I don't know if you'll get to challenges, but definitely one of the challenges for particularly last year and the year prior a bit was just the inflation and the cost yep. Yep. of raw goods, yep. everything from our yep. packaging to our flour, to eggs, to everything. And so- and eggs went up ridiculously, right? I mean, eggs went up like- Yes, yes. Wow. And the thing is, it's- it's 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 hard because it's hard to actually pull that price increase trigger, especially as a small business. Yeah, you know, because you don't have necessarily a safety net, and um, we have consumers that we interact with on a daily basis, very loyal consumers that are that are having their own challenges. Mm -hmm. So, so to even implement a price increase and to have them stay was a challenge for us and we knew we had to tell them the story and bring them along on you know unfortunately we have to do this here's the reason why um and here's you know we will maintain the same quality and here is what you will get you know and 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 in exchange of that and um something else we did to couple you know having to do a price increase we did a lot more um customer appreciation events throughout the year um, to try to appreciate, show appreciation to our customers, whether it was providing them some free goodies or some branded materials like cups and shirts, um, just to make them feel good that it was like a partnership. And, and I think that that went a long way with cr trying to create a loyal base as well. Sounds like it. You guys are you're really providing that, the story and the nostalgia and the customer experience and uh, and then being able to expand it. So pretty good. So what would you say is the biggest business challenge today other than inflation? <laughs> um, other than inflation, I, I would say 
one of the challenges for us is making sure that as we expand and grow at these high levels, that the consistency of our products remains the same. And so, you know, we're looking at some interesting things just to make sure as we expand to a second and third location um, that our products are consistent, formulas are the same. Um, and so that is a challenge, just keeping up with demand. And I wanna be very honest with that. Um, second is additional funding. Um, and so we've spent on our own, this is not with like the support of, you know, any COVID program or anything, even, you know, when we were in the pandemic, we were spending our own kind of funds to make the renovations and start to do some marketing, et cetera. Um, and so right now we're working on just building the capital and everything that we need to finish the construction of mm -hmm. our second location, because we want to make sure that this represents more of a headquarters location for us um, as we continue to expand. And so, yeah, I would say the, making sure that as we grow, the consistency and the quality of, that the consumer enjoys now remains the same. And second is continuing to work on building um, capital and, and resources as we expand. They brought in the smart one. <laughs> and, and, oh, well, this is not the fun part. That's not, that's not the say anything about anybody else on the team, but <laughs> I like the way you're thinking as, a, as an entrepreneur. It, so what would you say uh, would be your most significant learning since you started in the family business? Since I started in the family business, um, significant learnings. One is having the right team of supporters and mentors around you. Yeah. Uh, and so when I say this, and I, I don't want to take all the credit in terms of I'm not the smart one. I'm I, I'm the one that listens, <laughs> well resourced, loves to research. And again, go, going back to that listening, I um since I've been back, what's been great is that there has been several uh, programs locally to help small business owners. And so one, I want to highlight the Urban League of Broward County, and I believe it was SunTrust Bank. They partnered to do, to, to launch this small business cohort program. Um, I believe it was either in 2020 or in 2021. It was their first time even trying this program out where they, you know, took on maybe about 20 small businesses locally in the area. And they took us through uh, different areas, whether it's marketing, legal, um, uh, financial, budgeting, um, like accounting, I would say. And then there was technology. And so that was a great learning space for us to trade information and to learn about simple tools or foundational, foundational things that we should if we didn't yet have in place to help better structure our business, which we were handicapped in some areas. And this uh, program really helped to tighten us up. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was great. And that actually led to being one of the first grant winners um, for um, the Urban League and Office Depot. They had an Elevate Together grant. And so we, we were actually one of the first grant winners, our very first grant that we've ever won. Yeah. of ten thousand dollars that we were able to invest in our business and it was because we put ourselves in a space where we were not only learning but we had accesses to that type of opportunity to even apply for. you know that's that's one of the things because i'm i'm part of the beacon council which is miami's economic development council and um, we provide all kinds of resources for the small business you know community here and you know, and obviously we have a corollary up in Broward. And, and so it, it's it, where small businesses are the backbone of our community, not only our community, but our nation and our world, right? So as we wrap up the interview, are there any parting thoughts you want to share? Um, parting thoughts, number one, I can't stress enough, uh, have the right resources and mentors in place 
definitely listen to experts in similar fields. Um, I also wanted to plug in the Venture Mentoring Team, which I'm also part of that program right now. It's a, it's a group of successful current small businesses, small business owners and entrepreneurs who support other smaller businesses to help grow. And they've been instrumental in helping me to deep dive in the p l to mm -hmm. see what changes I need to make. And again, it's about having the right people around you who are smart and focused in one area that can help elevate you. And so that networking and that mentorship is critical. Um, second, in terms of parting uh, words, um, be passionate about what you do, love what you do and transform the space that you're in. Because I think a lot of small business owners or entrepreneurs, they don't even know the power that they have to impact their community. And that's been a cornerstone for us on, you know, we're a for-profit company, but how can we give back to the community that we serve or that we're in? And so we've partnered up with nonprofits. We've partnered up with the local city uh, to hold functions or to provide treats, you know, at whatever event that they have. Some were donations and, you know, others were, were paid for, but all within the spirit of trying to help and progress and elevate the community. And so I would, the challenge would be really to anyone um, seeing this, especially if you're an entrepreneur, is to don't is to not forget about the impact that you have around your community. This is beautiful. It sounds like it's in the DNA, in your DNA, right? So thank you so much for your time and for the difference that you're making in our community, both for your clients and for the greater community at large. And um, people can find out more about your business by going just to the website. It's L-A-P-A-I-X bakery.com. La Pe, but it's spelled L-A-P-A-I-X bakery.com. And um, just really thank you for being here. And this is a conclusion of Business Spotlight South Florida, interviewing business leaders that make South Florida great. Thank you, Nadesh. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Have a good day.